Okay, sorry about that. I had to get a few things taken care of. It is Tuesday. It should, feels like it should be Friday by about now, somewhere in there. It'll be very much on the nice side, but uh, hasn't happened yet, that's for certain. All right, it is just past 9.45, somewhere in there. It is Tuesday night, and it is a very quiet night. Not a lot to report at this time, so definitely some good news where it comes to getting out and about for this evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onig. This is weather overtime for Tuesday, the 26th of September, and continuing again to see a very dry several days ahead of us. Maybe the potential of some rainfall coming our direction, but really not by much. And we could definitely and pretty desperately use some because as of right now, for the entire month of September, we have picked up nine hundredths of an inch of rain and that's it we could use a lot more we're over three and a half inches behind for the year uh is that causing the possibility of maybe some wildfire danger risk we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit but definitely looking at some much drier conditions for the next several days thanks to kimberly colbach from the area around ray county on the tennessee river for a nice view of ragnar the dog very proud name there and a nice look at the pooch looking out over the waters thank you very much miss kimberly for that if you've got uh, weather pictures to share let's see them drop them to our facebook x or instagram pages give us a description as to what you were looking at uh, you don't have to use your name you can be anonymous if you want to but at least give us an idea as to where you were and what you were looking at out there so for right now again what do we got going on doesn't really amount to much beautiful weather lookout mountain from downtown chattanooga on the bailey's heating and air camera uh, not seeing any problems with visibility across the area tonight. Hopefully some good sunset shots. We'll see what we got on the Lee Point camera, sponsored by Plainview Outdoor Advertising, but a decent amount of sunshine uh, from earlier on today. Back to downtown from the News 12 studios on the veteran-owned Patriot Concrete camera, the slope of Lookout Mountain off into the distance, and again, not much in the way of anything involving uh, lots of clouds or rainfall for now. Tomahawk crane and rigging camera. Usually this intersection is backed up with a lot of traffic at this time, thanks to construction going on back to the left-hand side of this camera, but not seeing anything in the way of uh, problems for now. Chattanooga Theater Center from the Speedy's Total Car Care camera on the area down around Coolidge Park, very much on the quiet side for now. Uh, thank you, Speedy's Total Car Care, for being our sponsor there and from island cove marina and resorts few clouds a lot of sky shine illuminating those but uh beyond that just really not much going on at this point in time decently dry and quiet much warmer that temperature today we were almost into the 90s we managed to make our way uh, into the upper 70s in the course of the last couple of hours so uh, decently quiet for now just before 10 o'clock temperatures 60s and lower to mid 70s very much on the quiet side again, and dew point temperatures comfortable, a little bit higher than what they have been over the last couple of days, but really not looking too bad for now. We do have high pressure keeping things quiet. We've got some showers and thunderstorms back to our north and then down to our south. That's about all that we've got at this time. The potential for anything involving really powerful storms, severe weather, anything like that, not seeing anything for right now. We'll take a look at why that is coming up here in just a little bit. Tomorrow morning, there could be the potential of some areas of showers and thunderstorms popping up mainly down to our south around Atlanta, off into the Carolinas, minor potential only. And that continues into and around the early portions of the afternoon. And again, just not really all that much taking place for right now. Now, the best possibility tomorrow afternoon then kind of dwindling a little bit and then those showers and thunderstorms well back on up to our north drop into the area but because they're heading into areas with high pressure it's going to be very much on the calm side so little if anything going on uh, maybe some lingering showers and thunderstorms by about rush hour into around thursday then by early friday morning can't rule out a stray shower but that's going to be about all that we pick up there and then we get into Friday afternoon, and I think it looks like everything's going to dry out pretty well. A lot of sunshine, temperatures back in the 
lower 80s. So looking good for Friday night footballs. Our chances for rain are going to be number one, limited, and number two, there's just really not that much out there for right now. Uh, some moisture for some clouds, but that's really about it. And into the course of the next couple of days, this is going to be it for our chances of rainfall coming up. So tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, Wednesday and uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and the day after that, Thursday. I knew I should have had some more coffee at some point in time. Excuse me for all that. We see that's it for the chances of rainfall for right now. And that is going to be our only chance for a while. We come to the end of the month this weekend, going into October. The first few days, very much on the warm side, decently above normal. Uh, not record high temperatures, but definitely not feeling like fall either. And no uh, frosty conditions anytime soon. So very warm and very dry. And this looks like it is going to be it for rainfall for the next several days. If everything works on the next 10 to 14 days, there really is no good sign of anything involving rain coming our direction uh, anytime soon. It's going to be uh, almost two weeks before we see anything else. And that's where we start getting into the potential of maybe some much drier weather coming on through. Take a look at this from the uh, National Weather Service and from the National Interagency Fire Center. The bright red dots are the latest reports of wildfires, and those are uh, just about 6 to 12 hours old, somewhere in there. And a lot, now some of this going on through southeast Missouri and central Arkansas, this is where you're starting to see a lot of the rice fields burning off, but these are where the fires are being detected by satellite. So these are showing up here, and not all of these are quote-unquote wildfires, but we are seeing fire and smoke from a lot of this uh, as farmers burn off what's left of their the stubble of their crop fields, things like that. Now, some of these, again, brand new, and we have been seeing a little bit more in the way of smoke out of this, and that is where we'll continue to see the potential of maybe some wildfire smoke hanging around the southeast United States. There's precious little anytime soon giving us any chance of anything involving moisture. The current forecast from the Climate Prediction Center is showing above a better than average chance of not getting any precipitation whatsoever. So for right now, this is going to be the next 48 hours are about as much as we get in the way of anything involving rain. So that's really going to be about it for right now. Uh, Trey Cool, thank you very much uh, for tuning in from Collierville. And thank you very much for all your pictures out there. We'll get another couple of them on there one of these days soon. And uh, yeah, it looks you guys were over 90 over in that area of Tennessee. So looking a little bit toasty over in that part of the Mid-South. So hopefully your air conditioning is working and hopefully MLGW hasn't given you too many more outages out there as I've heard some uh, horror stories about that going on in the last several days. So thanks a lot for joining us for tonight. We see again the potential of better possibilities of showers and thunderstorms coming into the picture. The lower section of this map the blue, green, orange, and red color, that is available storm energy. That shows, again, where the thunderstorms will have the best chance of developing. And then as we put this into motion, this is not current radar, but this is future radar. So this gives you an idea as to what we're going to be expecting in the course of the next couple of days. Sorry, it's going a little bit on the faster side there, but the best possibility of anything involving thunderstorms is going to be up Ohio River Valley, Great Lakes in that area. And that, again, some of that is going to be heading our direction uh, by about Thursday morning, it looks like, coming on through for that potential of some showers and thunderstorms. This is not the best chance. Notice again that the best possibility of development is up here. It's moving into this dark blue area, which is a good location to where air is more stable, less in the way of energy going on. So as these showers and thunderstorms move farther southeast, I'm really doubting that we're going to be seeing a lot of anything involving a lot of showers and thunderstorms coming up. So the trigger back to our north and then dropping our way 
it's possible to see them begin, but I really don't think they're going to be continuing to head this direction outside of remnants of those showers and thunderstorms, and that is really going to be about all that we wind up with. All right, taking a look at the tropics, uh, South America here, the Leeward Islands, and back toward Hispaniola to the west. This is Tropical Storm Philippe, the P name storm, and this is going to be traveling its way to the west northwest. But the National Hurricane Center is not showing any increase. Matter of fact, it looks like it's going to be going to a post tropical low pressure system degrading in strength and any cohesion. Take a look at it right now in the satellite picture. It is very lopsided. There's not a lot of structure to this storm right here, so I really doubt we're going to be seeing uh, too much of anything going on here. But we're not done with this just yet. Philippe out here again on the front portion of this. Looking back to the east, we have another storm system. According to the National Hurricane Center, this one standing a 90% chance of development. And once again, if this develops, this will become the R name storm or Rina or Rina, depending on how you pronounce that, but I believe uh, that again, R I N A, Rina. So that following in Philippe and Lee and Margo's trails. That is where we could see again that potential of that storm heading to the northwest. If this takes another sharp right hand turn, Bermuda will have more to worry about this than the continental United States. But that's going to be it for the chances of anything involving huge amounts of tropical weather. If one of these were to move into the Gulf of Mexico and not become a major storm, it could be a big boon for a lot of locations, shoveling a lot of moisture on shore to where it is desperately needed. But as of right now, again, that's about as good as we're looking at when it comes to anything really developing. That storm system in the Gulf a couple of days ago, that one dwindled and is basically nothing. The National Hurricane Center not even keeping an eye on that for right now. So if your plans involve anything outdoors, including around the golf, only thing you should have to worry about uh, is the gophers out there. But tomorrow with chances of lightning and thunder, want to make certain you are very careful. If you see that lightning or hear the thunder, time to wrap it up and get back indoors again. Either way, if you're headed out for anything tomorrow, Definitely want to watch out. Again, it's going to be warm, so take that extra bottle of water, and please make certain you're paying attention to what's going on with the weather. On your Greater Chattanooga Orthodontics bus stop forecast for tomorrow, chances of showers in the morning, and remember that's a real stop sign on the side of the bus. So if that is out, everybody stops to let the kids get to where they have to go to. More chances of showers and quite possibly a rumble of thunder into the afternoon. So may want to think about the rain protection gear doesn't really seem like a huge chance of anything but there will be the best chance we've seen in a while uh, all the way through the end of september and the same forecast basically applies for thursday as well so if you have plans for getting the kids to school keep an eye on that and make certain that you're able to uh, get them to where they need to go to dry and safe from anything involving rainfall across the area matter of fact again going into the far future taking a look at the supercast uh, going through the end of the next couple of days, Thursday, Wednesday, in that area, better chances of showers, maybe some thunderstorms. And then after that date and time up here, little if anything taking place all the way. Another storm system develops over the Plains states about a week and a half from now around October the 6th. But that's, again, about as close as this gets. We really don't see anything in the way of precipitation for nearly two weeks coming our direction so that's about as good as we're seeing uh, there we're coming up on the next uh, solar eclipse the annular solar eclipse so named because it won't cover the entire surface of the sun the moon will be just far enough away to let that ring of fire show through we'll be seeing about a 50 percent coverage out of that so the moon will only cover over about half of the solar surface yes you can look at it but only with again those those glasses that you got for the last solar eclipse back in 2017 uh, should be able to pick up some of those at some point in time 
and keep those around because we're less than 200 days away from the total solar eclipse. Again, we won't see 100% coverage out of this, but it'll be a little bit more than the annular eclipse. That's coming up April 8th, 2024. The annular solar eclipse will be coming up on October 14th. So hopefully the weather uh, remains good there. About a week or so before that eclipse, join the Barnard Astronomical Society of Chattanooga at Cloudland Canyon St State Park for their latest star party, Saturday the 7th, uh, that's uh, 2020, 2023, 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. They'll have their telescopes out there, a great way to get your kids introduced to astronomy. More information at facebook.com slash barnardastro and also barnardastronomy.org on their main website to get more details about these upcoming star parties out there. Really need to be able to look through those big telescopes that can be touted from one place to another and get your kids looking through those telescopes at what is flying around out there in the universe. So if you'd like to take a look at that, good opportunity to do so. Teachers, administrators, please contact us if you'd like to have our weather experts in the classroom. Uh, would love to know more. Uh, it, again, all you have to do is go to the Food City Weather in the Classroom program, and you can find that at WDEF.com slash weather, and click on Weather in the Classroom for more. Now, when nothing is going on, is a great time to program your weather radio, and we can help you do that. Go to the same website, WDEF.com slash weather, for more details, and you have an opportunity to get this ready to go before the next severe weather threat happens. And this is just one of the best ways that you can make certain that you can be ready to go on this and it's all part of being ready you should have multiple ways of getting severe weather warnings don't just depend on depending on your location don't just depend on sirens depend on again local media like news 12 your cell phone can get alerts your national weather service radio can get alerts uh, it's best to have several different ways of making certain that you are informed when it comes to severe weather. So again, please keep an eye on that. I think that should do it. We've covered pretty much all the bases at this time. So right now, I don't see too much of anything else going on. Uh, of course, we'll have more in the morning with Chip Chapman. And of course, I'll be back in the afternoon and evening to give you an idea as to what's going on with the rest of your midweek forecast. And we'll have a ne our next West Shore Home weather window picture of the day as well. More information on our website. You can find me on all these social media pages, but drop by our website at WDEF.com slash weather. Uh, for more information there. And of course, stay tuned for more with News 12 on air. I'll be on with Rick Nyman and Andrew Harrison tonight on News 12 at 11, where you can watch live on our website at WDEF.com if you'd like to tune in and see that over the web instead. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onig. This has been News 12's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us for Tuesday evening, the 26th of September. And stay tuned for much more with News 12 on air and online. Thanks for joining us tonight.